Pope's teaching came the following words. We can understand how Catholics feel and we would want in no way to interfere with their expression of sorrow and grief at this time. Even those who did not share or fundamentally disagreed with his principles have been touched by the manner in which Pope John Paul II bore his illness in his final days. He will not fulfil his wish to visit the North, but the North is united with the rest of the global community in sadness at his parting. Declan McBennett, RT News, Armagh. In Dublin, hundreds of people gathered at a special Mass for the Pope in the Pro-Cathedral. The Mass was celebrated by the Archbishop of Dublin, Dr. Jermud Martin, who told the congregation about his personal memories of John Paul II. Dubliners of all ages and of all religions came to the Pro-Cathedral for this special Mass. I'm not even Catholic and I would still come to this because he did reach out to so many different uh, you know, religions and that, so definitely, definitely very sad day. I want my children to say goodbye and I remember when he came to us in 1979 and I want to say goodbye. The Mass was celebrated by Archbishop Dermot Martin. He remembered his meetings with Pope John Paul over the years and he told the packed pro-cathedral about the Pope's words to him when he first asked him to become Archbishop of Dublin. You're going back to your own country after many years. But he added, you're going back to a very different Ireland. He spoke to me about the rapid change of religious culture in Ireland. He was concerned about the situation of the faith in Ireland. The former Archbishop of Dublin, Cardinal Desmond Connell, also attended the Mass. He will travel to Rome on Tuesday to begin the process of electing a successor to Pope John Paul. So far as I'm concerned, there hasn't been any speculation uh, up to this. Nobody has approached me, nobody has said anything to me. And I've been in Rome, uh, this is my fifth time in Rome since Christmas. The next major ceremony here at the Pro Cathedral will take place on Tuesday evening. A solemn mass will be celebrated and the President, Mary McAleese, and the Taoiseach, Bertie O'Hearn, are expected to attend. In the meantime, a book of condolence has been opened here. Thousands of people have already left messages and prayers. Orla O'Donnell, RTE News, the Pro-Cathedral in Dublin. The Taoiseach has said that while his life and mission had been devoted to the service of the Church, Pope John Paul had been a towering figure in history and a huge influence on world leaders. As a reader of many of the Pope's economic and political papers, Mr O'Hearn said he was personally impressed by the Holy Father's teachings, which had a message for all politicians. Well, I, I think, there, of course, they were, they were written in, from, from a point of view of, 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 of religion, um, but, I mean, the political message was, was clear in them. And I, I think, I mean, he, he, he was, he, I mean, he was against communism, but he was also a, a, against um, uh, capitalism. Uh, he, he, he was against anything that hadn't got the dignity of the human person. And I think that's a, that's a good reminder for everyone, you know, that, that everybody is equal. And of course everyone gets into the argument that everyone isn't exactly equal, but that isn't the point. I mean, it is the dignity uh, of, of the human person. And by implication, uh, that means everyone should try to live in, in peace and harmony and there should be equality. Um, and and he, he, he made that abundantly clear uh, in so many uh, of his economic um, type speeches and papers that he's done over the last quarter of a century. And personally for you as a member of his church, how do you feel about his passing? Um, well, I, 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 must, I must say I, I, I've always liked him. Um, ev like everybody, you mightn't agree with every line that he ever said. I mean, that, that's not the point, but I, but I liked him and I, and I, I liked what, uh, the, the way he worked so hard during that visit you referred to it earlier about his words at Drogheda and his appeal for people to move away from violence what impact do you think that had? Um, at the time it didn't because it was rejected over time and his continuing interest and the continuing preaching of the same message did um, he, he didn't in that speech um, and it's worth reading it back now uh, and I have done that in the last few days um, he didn't help people give up their cause he didn't say to her fighting for a lost cause. He didn't say all oh, this was a waste of time. He said that violence was not the way to progress it. Um, and I think that's a good message for people who are trying to pursue uh, any cause, uh, that it is not um, by, by violent means. And, and, and in time, it, it perhaps took 15 years on from that. His, his message did get through, because remember, he was continuing that message, uh, particularly in, in his Christmas and, and Easter uh, messages every year, as he did right up until last week. 
And of course, you did meet him um, about four years ago. Tell me about that. Yes, I, it was the elevation of, of Carmen Connell, and, and Carmen Connell had, had, had kindly invited me to be, to be in, the, in the Vatican for, for that occasion, which was a great honour. Um, I, I was there, and uh, Carmen Connell arranged for me to, 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 to meet the, the Pope. Uh, which was a big thrill. I, I, I readily admit that everyone who knows me would know I, I, I was chuffed. Uh, for me to meet the Pope was um, was huge. And uh, of course, as soon as he, he was introduced, but the bishop told me who, who he was. He, he asked about about Ireland um, and how was Ireland and how was Ireland doing. And uh, he didn't say then that he, he hoped to, to come. But I, I mean, we knew up until last year we had been in touch. The church authorities had been in touch with the Vatican right up until uh, the, the, the autumn. Uh, that perhaps he would have come in 2005. And, and OK, it, it couldn't happen. Uh, nobody, I think, would have wanted him to, to see him put himself through the grueling travel again. Uh, but I, I think thoughts do count. And it was good that he, he was still thinking of Ireland. Leaders of the Muslim community here have expressed their sadness at the death of Pope John Paul. The Islamic Cultural Centre said he had worked endlessly and tirelessly for peace. As it is a loss for, for the whole a Christian community, a Catholic Church in Ireland especially, it is also for us also because for us uh, the Pope was not only a, a, a Christian, he, he, was, he was engaged in so many other issues which related to us as Muslims. First of all, he was the first person to initiate the dialogue between Christians and Muslims and which is a great thing and since that time uh, uh, um, all positive progress were made and we hope that this will be continued. And he was, for example, the first uh, 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 pope to enter a mosque for centuries. That is this is a very significant thing for us. And nowhere was the grief more deeply felt than in the Pope's native Poland. There have been ceremonies and prayers across the country, with up to 100,000 people attending a special mass outside Krakow. The Polish president said Poland wouldn't have gained its freedom from communism without the help of John Paul II. The bells tolled across Poland to mark the passing of Pope John Paul II. The man who had provided such enduring moral guidance to a country which had suffered so much was suddenly gone. Despite living through his final years of ill health and despite the knowledge that the end was near, his death was so deeply felt here outside the Krakow residence where he lived for 15 years as cardinal. It is very difficult to say anything. We are all very shocked. We can only stay in silence, I suppose. It's a very sad event for every Polish people in this country because this is our Pope, this is his Polish, so we are, everyone is crying for him. Early morning brought the realization that the man who had provided such a special bond between Poland and the Vatican, and therefore Poland and the world, had died. Following an emergency cabinet meeting, the Polish government declared a period of national mourning to continue until the Pope's burial. But the grieving will be intensely spiritual, and it began just outside Krakow at a sanctuary beloved of Karol Wojtyla as a young man. This new church is dedicated to the mystic nun, Sister Faustina Kolowski, born here 100 years ago. The Pope had a special devotion to her, and he used to visit the sanctuary while he worked at a nearby chemical factory during the Second World War. He canonized her in 1983, and when he heard the church was near completion, he decided to come to Poland in August 2002. It was the last trip to his homeland. Uh, I'm coming in, in the in the here to to to, to pray and, and with with my wife with children. That's absolutely it's very difficult for me. Poland's mood is now delicately poised between grief and gratitude. Tony Connolly, RTE News, Krakow. An estimated 1,000 members of Dublin's Polish community attended a special service in St. Mickens Church in Dublin city centre this afternoon. During the ceremony, the celebrant thanked the Polish community for their generous and spontaneous response to the pontiff's death. We did not announce it, and you came. 
Pope John Paul's dying message was repeated in St. Mickens Church in Dublin this afternoon as hundreds of members of Dublin's Polish community packed into the church to pray for the pontiff. Inside there was barely room to stand. Outside crowds lined the corridors. Many tried but failed to hold back tears as young and old reflected on his life through prayer and through song. He did many good things for, Pol for Poland, for Polish people. Oh, he's a tremendous man. He did a tremendous work for during all his life, not just for the Polish people, but for everybody. He was seen all over the world as an iconic figure, and I'm, I'm very sad that we lost a person like that. You know, that is almost the same like we, I uh, lost somebody to my family, you know. That's, that's I feel too, this, you know. There were emotional scenes here this afternoon as members of Dublin's Polish community paid their respects to the man they described as the greatest person Poland has ever produced. Samantha Library, RTE News, Dublin City Centre. And coming up next on 6-1 News, Justin will have all the day's sport. And 10,000 people attend ceremonies in Knox Rhine to pray for the Pope. Public viewing, the date of his funeral hasn't yet been announced. Some 10,000 people attended ceremonies at Knox Shrine in County Mayo, which the Pope visited during his visit to Ireland in 1979. The Archbishop of Tune, Dr. Michael Neary, who celebrated Mass at the Basilica, described Pope John Paul as a tireless champion of the dignity of the human person and a powerful advocate of peace. Pope John Paul said he came to Knock as a pilgrim who wanted to visit one of the world's great shrines, a shrine which reminded the world of Ireland's heroic attachment and fidelity to the church. Today, thousands of people from all over the country came here to offer their thanks for the life of the pilgrim pope. I'm sad that he's gone, but um, he lived a great life, and uh, I take great joy now out of the fact that the way he went and what he did and what he did for the world like is something that I'm proud of and I can say this morning I'm proud to be a Catholic. There is a feeling of sadness today but I think we must have hope as well. I think that's what Pope John Paul would want for us to continue. Not to be sad and down but to hope for the future. Please God and peace in our world. Archbishop Neary described Pope John Paul as a tireless advocate of peace and the dignity of the human person. A man of granite faith, deep prayer, and extraordinary in his reaching out to other religions and to people of no religion. They prayed in the early morning mist with their hearts and with their feet, pilgrims of all ages sharing the same deep faith. I think young, peop young people feel a great sense of loss. Um, I in particular uh, think that the Pope was a great uh, believer of um, young people in the Catholic Church. And um, I, w I hope that I can pass on some of the things that I learned from my religion to my children. Jim Fahey, RT News, Knock, County Mayo. And now the sports news with Justin Tracy. Thank you very much, Anne. We begin with rugby and following Leinster's disappointing performance yesterday in the Heineken Cup quarter-final, it was left to Munster to carry Irish hopes in Europe's Premier Club competition. To accommodate the huge travelling Munster contingent, the game against Bioritz was moved to the Anoeta Stadium in San Sebastian. Munster's Red Army on the march again. Almost 8,000 strong, they travel to San Sebastian for Munster's seventh European Cup quarter-final in succession. Today, though, they came more in hope than expectation. The loss of Christian Cullen, Ronan O'Gara and Brian Lima meant the odds, as ever, stacked against them. Beeritz boasted a top-quality lineup and took the lead through French international Dimitri Yashvili. Munster, though, were largely... ...were on retreat last night when they received word of his death. We started the night with one hour of silent prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament for the Holy Father. And when we came out from that, we learned that he'd passed away right in the middle of it. 
John Paul has had a profound influence on the lives of these young Catholics, many of whom have been in his presence at World Youth Days. I know lots of people call him a traditionalist and think he's from another era, but really I felt he opened up the treasury and of wisdom that the church has for young people and for the people of today. He was a real prophet. He loved us, he believed in us, he trusted us. And even when we messed up, and even the things that we have been doing wrong as young people, he still looked at us and he loved us. And I mean, that's something I would always remember in the sense that he was always a father to me. He showed such a great example to all Christians how we are called to take up our cross and follow Christ. His cross was his physical suffering and he took it up and he, he, he carried it so bravely right to the very end. Their only concern is whether the pontiff's successor will be as embracing of younger people as Pope John Paul II was. His legacy is really so much for young people and I don't think another pope can just ignore us. The future of the church is young people so I think he, he will embrace us as we will embrace him. Alba Keneally, RTE News. And the main news once again this evening, the body of Pope John Paul is lying in state in the Apostolic Palace at the Vatican. Tomorrow it will be moved to St. Peter's Basilica where members of the public can pay their respects. And that's the news for now. We'll have an extended 9 o'clock news. Until then, good night. Good night. ...that it was to hold three days mourning. The Chinese state may have broken ties with the Vatican in the 1950s, but the country's Catholics made their grief felt in state-run churches. And in Russia, the head of the Orthodox Church expressed his hope for the continuation of good relations with the Vatican. In the Arab, Muslim and Jewish worlds, the Pope too was remembered. The Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon said the Pope was a man of peace who had stood in Jerusalem and called for understanding among religions. In Britain, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, said John Paul II had been one of the very greatest Christian leaders. At least two things which I think will stick in many people's minds. One was the forgiveness that he offered to the person who attempted to assassinate him. The other was the honesty and courage with which he faced the reality of the Christian Church's complicity with anti-Semitism. In South Africa, President Thabo Mbeki offered sympathy to Catholics. And in India, the spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhists, the Dalai Lama, sent his condolences to Catholics everywhere. He described Pope John Paul II as a great spiritual leader. Jennifer O'Connell, RTE News. And here at home, the Pope's life has been celebrated in prayer at masses and services around the country, as Pascal Sheehy now reports. With dawn, a day of masses and special prayers for Pope John Paul began throughout the country. Early morning mass at St. Saviour's Dominican Friary in Waterford was typical of many simple services where prayers were offered. Killarney in County Kerry has welcomed visitors and tourists for many years and people from at home and abroad gathered at St. Mary's Cathedral to celebrate the Pope's life. I am, I am Polish. I've, I'm very sad because it will never be the same Pope so good, I think. Well, I feel very sad that the Pope has died. Uh, I think his legacy will be that uh, he loved everybody. I think he was a fascinating man. He was a man of great love, great charity and great humility. He was a great...